we just finished talking about what synthetic division, well, what division looks like when it comes to polynomials. So now we're going to put that into practice here with this example. We're going to do it two different ways. One of the ways we're going to do this is by using what's called long division. Okay, so in the past, if you took 0308 or 0310, here is what long division would have said. Long division would say, take your divisor, x minus 3, put that on the outside, and your dividend goes inside. And so it's the same kind of setup for regular long division, except now you're dealing with polynomials. And what we would do is we just kind of focus on the x right here, and the minus 3 just comes along uh, for the ride. We're trying to figure out what we would multiply this x times to get x squared, because you're going to start getting rid of things. So you multiply x times x right here. So x times x gives you x squared. And the reason you want x squared, because if you remember with long division, once you multiply, you end up subtracting. Okay, so x times x gives me x squared, but don't forget about the minus 3 here. So x times negative 3 is negative 3x. And then what we do is that we have to subtract. So we draw the line and we change each of these signs. Now I use a different color so I can see what I had when I did the multiplication. And then I see the new sign whenever I'm doing the subtraction part of long division. So the trick is to make these guys look exactly the same right here so that when I subtract, now they are additive inverses and they're going to go away. So that reduces to 0. 7x plus 3x gives me 10x. And like with long division, we're going to bring down the next piece, so plus 2. And then we start all over. So come back up here to x. What would you multiply x times to get 10x? And that would be positive 10. So 10 times x is 10x. 10 times negative 3 is negative 30. And again, bring out your special pen to draw the line and change the sign. So this becomes minus 10x and this becomes plus 30. So these guys started off looking exactly the same so that when I subtract they are now additive inverses, or opposites, as you might like to say. And we get 32. So you get x plus 10 with a remainder of 32. Now we're going to hold off on that for just a second. We're not actually going to write that full-on answer, okay? because this is, really isn't good enough in terms of how we write answer from division with polynomials. So that's long division. Let's see what synthetic division looks like. Now what's really interesting to me is that with synthetic division, it does all of the same stuff that we would have had for long division, except it eliminates all of the variable pieces. All you're going to see are the coefficients and the signs. And all the changing of signs that we have right here, it's also going to eliminate that step, and it's going to take care of that at the very beginning. So I want you to watch what I do, and then follow along with the rest of the examples that we have. So here's the way that I do synthetic division. And it might look a little bit different from the book, but this was the first way that I learned to do it. So you make this little bar right here, and you want to make sure that it's big enough so that you can have two rows of numbers on the inside. And I'm going to go ahead and put headings here so you know where everything goes. And it's all about the coefficients. It's just the numbers, no x's. So this is where I'm going to put my k value. As you saw in that last video, x minus k is what we're dividing by. And then my dividend, the excuse me, the coefficients for my dividend are going to go on this first row. But what we need to make sure we do is to list these guys. So we have x squared is our highest degree term, and then we have x, and then we have our constant. So those are headings that I'm putting above, and I'm going to write what those numbers are. So my k value is not negative 3, and that's what we were talking about in the last video. We see minus 3, we actually have to do the opposite of that, so the k value is actually positive 3. And by doing the opposite of that, that takes care of all the changing of signs that I have right here. Just watch, you'll, you'll see. And now I'm going to write the coefficients for my polynomial, for my dividend. So this is 1x squared, positive 7x, and positive 2. We're not writing the x's there, just their coefficients. 
All right, now here we go. The first step is to take this lead coefficient and bring it down always. So bring this down here. And this bottom row is where we're gonna get the coefficients for our answer. Once you've got the one, it's just a matter of multiplying and adding. So you take the k times this value and we get three. So you multiply and now you add. So take seven and three and add those guys and we get 10. Now you multiply again. Three times 10 is 30 and that's what goes right here. Add the two and the 30 and we get 32. Notice the similarity with these numbers compared to what we have up here. One X, there's 10, and there's my remainder of 32. It's the same thing with long division, but a little bit more condensed, a little bit more efficient. Now here's one thing you need to understand. In the original problem, let's kind of block off some of the stuff right here. In the original problem, you've got X squared divided by X. If this were just a normal problem with uh, exponents, you would take those powers and you would subtract. So two minus the one gives you one. So when you have x squared and you divide by x, you are losing one degree. And that's what we're gonna see down here. For these guys, you go from x squared to x. You go from x and you lose a degree, and now this is going to be the constant term for your answer. And this 32 is the remainder. And so the way that we write this is just what you see right here. So this is 1x, the constant is 10, plus you take your remainder, which is 32, and you put that over your divisor. Your divisor is not 3, though. Your divisor is this guy up here, the x minus 3. So over x minus 3. And if you think back to the stuff that we did in the previous video, right, we said that this is going to be our quotient and this is going to be our remainder and this goes over the divisor. That was that pattern that we saw, the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. So that's our answer. That's all we have to do. Once you get it set up, it's a matter of dropping down that lead coefficient, multiply, add multiply times the three, add, and you'd keep on going if there were more terms. So let's do an example where we do have more terms, and let's see, see how bad it is. And then later on we're gonna see uh, applications of this. How do we get this to work in our favor? So let's make sure we have that here. All right, so I want to divide three x to the third, plus x squared minus 9x minus 5 and this is all over x plus 2 so you see my divisor is x plus 2 now I could do long division but synthetic division is going to be much faster much more efficient so let's make sure we understand how that works um, I keep sliding I don't need to let's set it up like we have here so draw your L-shaped figure right here. Make sure that you put the proper headings. Your K value is always, is always gonna be out here. You see we go all the way up to X to the third, so we go X to the third, X squared, X, and the constant term. Whatever your highest degree is, you start there, so X to the third, and you go X squared, X to the first, x to the zero, which is your constant term. You can't skip. If for some reason there was a term that's missing, you still have to put its heading there. And if the term is missing, you're going to write a zero because there wouldn't be anything. Your k value is negative two. Even though it says a plus two there, you're going to do the opposite of what you see. So the opposite of plus two is negative two. The coefficients, you bring them down just as you see them. So that's three x to the third. One x squared negative 9x and negative 5. So that's the setup. The same kind of setup that we have up here. So the first thing we do is we drop that lead coefficient. 
So this becomes a three. I mean, not becomes, it's still a three. And now we just multiply and add. Now every time you do the multiply, it's multiplying times the k. So negative two times three is negative six. You add these guys in that column and you get negative five. Now you take this negative five and you multiply it times the k. So we get positive 10. Negative nine plus 10 is one. And again, you're gonna multiply times the k. You keep doing this until you get all the way to the very end of the problem. Negative two times one is negative two. So when these guys combine, we get negative seven. And as we talked about just above, when you do the synthetic division, you're losing a degree from each term. So what was x to the third, this guy is now the coefficient for x squared. x squared loses a degree and he becomes x. This becomes the new constant. And the little box that we create here on the end is for your remainder term. And now we just take these numbers and we write our answer. So this division problem gives us the quotient of 3x squared minus 5x plus 1. And then you've got to take that remainder term. Okay, So I suggest always putting a plus right here and then drawing your fraction for the remainder term. Put the remainder in the numerator just as you see it, so that's negative seven, over the divisor. Remember, the divisor is this guy, not the negative two, that's just k, but it's x plus two, like this. Now you can write it that way, or if you want to, you could just say minus and do seven over x plus two like that. Whether you have plus and you put the negative in the numerator or you just do negative in front, it's, it's all gonna mean the same thing for that remainder piece, okay? So we got a couple more examples to uh, go through. So I'll catch you on the flip side.